Can you describe Mrs. Cortino specifically any times involving your sons, Johnny and Anthony, when acts of violence actually took place in your home? I didn't. I was working, you know, every day. You mean you're telling us that you were not aware of any problems with your sons? What are you talking about, problems? Every family has problems. With kids, you worry, right? How they turn out? That's normal. No. What happened in your family was not normal, Mrs. Cartino. That kind of terrible violence is not normal, believe me. Johnny and Anthony were like the other kids in the neighborhood. Did your husband feel that there were no problems with Johnny and Anthony? We thought they'd outgrow it. We've loved them. More than you think is possible. And everything backfired. Better beat to the penny this time. It always is, Johnny. <laughs> Pretty boy thinks he's Al Capone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You got a problem? No problem, man. Oh, what's with the smile? Hey, wipe it off your face, man. Smart ass, wipe it. I'll give you three, man. One. Look, Johnny, nobody's laughing. Let's go. Two. Come on, he's not smiling anymore, man, okay? Okay? I don't know why not. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Can you lend me some quarters? I'll pay you back. Uh, yeah, I think I got some. Thanks, man. So, uh, how's your brother Johnny doing, man? Oh, he's still in Los Angeles, you know. We don't want to hear from him. Hey, I'm taking off. I'll call you later. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Smells great, just like Pop used to make it. Hey, my grandma's sauce, like we grew up on it. Nobody makes it like this. We don't do this enough anymore. You know, you coming over here for dinner, family dinner, nice, hi, huh, Anthony? Hey, Anthony, you want to go to the fights a week from Friday night? I got an extra ticket. Oh, I don't know, Uncle Louie. I got an audition for the Mardi Gras show at school that afternoon. Oh, so how is the band? Great, except we don't have a name yet for it. I mean, at least one that everybody likes. But we were thinking of electric shoes. What's that? Electric shoes. Who's got electric shoes? What the hell does that mean? Well, it's catchy. I mean, it sort of grabs you. Yeah, it does. So what does the Rolling Stones mean, really? The Grateful Dead. Will you be grateful to be dead, Louie? <laughs> yeah, I probably will. <laughs> oh. Make it fast. It's 
probably about rehearsal. Hello? Yeah? Um, okay. Yeah, my voice is getting a little deeper. I'll get Mom. Mom, it's Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Hey, Mom. How you doing? Fine. How are you doing? Oh, tremendous. The used car business is really booming out here. I'm selling like crazy. Yeah, got me a Rolex watch now and everything. It's got diamond numbers, too. Anyway, um... Uh, I was just thinking about home and you. I, I just thought I'd say hello. Good to hear your voice. Oh, yeah? How'd you like to see me? I'd like to see you, Ma. For a while. It's been a year. I miss you. Mom? Yeah. That's great, then. I get a plane tomorrow. No, wait. Wait, Johnny, uh... Let me, you know, let me, um, think about it. Talk to Anthony. I'm sorry about everything, Mom. I'm straight now. It'll be different. Well, that would make me very happy. Call in a few days. Collect. I love you, Mama. He wants to come home. You kicked him out already, Mom. Twice. Once even before Papa died. You promised me that you wouldn't let him come back. He said things were good. He sounded Are you going to let him come back? Look, just simmer down, okay? I didn't say yes. If you let I... him come back, then I'm leaving. I swear. Miss America. What's that? It's a little old bikini, Ma. Oh, don't <laughs> put that away. Ah, oh, come on. Papa always said you were knocking on the bed and Stop. Right, Anthony? Great part, huh? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, huh? Good. Hey, we were we were worried. We expected you an hour ago. Oh, well, I ordered that limo on my credit card, right? Yeah. And the creep had a flat. He was late picking me up. Come on inside. And throw that thing away. Nah, not before you model it for me, mama. That is not funny. That's the brother. Hey, Anthony. Hi. Just getting home from school? I was playing with my band. Well, tremendous. I forgot the crap they have on TV here. In L.A., we got wrestling on in the afternoons. Well, usually I'm the only one here in the afternoons. You know, I'm practicing. Well, listen, if you want to practice, by all means, blast away, kid. I can take it. No, I'm sorry, I'll keep it down. No, it gets you and it's loud. It's okay. No, I'll keep it down. Yeah, I think it's great you got a band and all. 
You're really shaping up, Anthony. You used to be such an uptight little buttercup. My band's pretty hot. Yeah, I believe it. What's its name? Well, we don't know which one to use out of two. It's either going to be electric shoes or blue shoes. We kind of play like blues rock. Mm, blue shoes, all right. I like that. And you all wear little blue shoes together, huh? Maybe nothing else but little old blue shoes. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can paint some other things blue, too. <laughs> yeah, if you could find them. Well, I gotta go get ready. I'm going to the fights tonight with Uncle Louie. Like the old days, we pop, you know? Johnny, um, some guys were asking me and, well, I was just wondering if, you know, you had any of your guns with you. What guys? Just, like, guys, you know, from the neighborhood, neighborhood guys. Hey, I don't got no guns, and you don't gotta go to Mom! I won't go to Mom, I promise. I didn't mean to get you mad. They're not, amigo. Blue shoes, that's the one. Hi, you ready? Uncle Louie's in the car. He drove me. I just gotta get my jacket, Ma. Things are okay with Johnny, huh? Better than you expected. Yeah. Oh, Mom, my band passed the audition today for the Mardi Gras show. Two songs. Terrific. Johnny, hurry up. Your uncle wants to make the first fight. Hey, Anthony. Maybe you and me can hang out one night, huh? Go to a movie, huh? A club. Great. Sunday, I'm going to take the three of us out for dinner. A new place in the mall. Johnny, supposed to have the best crab ever. Ah, oh, tremendous, Mom. You know, I may never leave home. Okay, you better go. Hey, 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 I don't let anybody push me. Hurry up. I'm going to make dinner. This place, it's perfect, you know? I mean, it's like a glass roof over the sky. Mm. I could live in one of these places and never go out. And there's no snow, there's no rain, there's no cold, there's no bugs. Mm -hmm. And that'd be something, huh, Mom? Never seen another bug for the rest of your life. Oh, I don't know. Let's not look for bugs. This is my treat. Stupid Anthony. He's missing out. I have to rehearse. Johnny, what do you think about coming home? Working in the store. Settle down. Come on, don't go push No, no, me. let me finish. Remember when your father changed the store from groceries to furniture? His papa had a fit. But he proved he could do it. You could, too. Sell anything you want to. With your personality, you smile. People feel it, you know? Forget it, Ma. I'm into other stuff now. So what's so great about California, huh? You got a sunburn all year. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, you'd love it there, Ma. You'd never be cold. You know, I was going to buy you an airline ticket for your birthday to come out and see me if I didn't come home now. You are home. Think about what I'm saying. Okay. Okay? Look your crap. Johnny, hey, how you doing? I heard you were back, man. Yeah, uh, listen, Nick, I'm out to dinner with my mom tonight, okay? I'm sorry, I can't just talk to you, all right? Okay, hey, you look good, man. Thanks. Hey, you give me a call later, all right? And catch up on some old news, okay? okay. Where do you know him from? Uh, the neighborhood. You have to check it out with Anthony before you ask me about the storm, Ma. No. I want it. He'd want it like I say. He's a good boy. I 
goody goody boy. Johnny. This could work out. Let's get a cab. We're gonna miss the movie. Cool. Cab. <laughs> wait here. I, I gotta go talk to those guys for a minute. Well, who are they? Just wait here. California, and they didn't have my phone number, just my address. So I gotta go with them now. Where to? Ah, they're starting a business here. It's a job. Why didn't they just come to the house, ring the bell? If it's such good business. Because they didn't feel like it. Knock it off! Look, Anthony, everything's okay. I mean, it's clean. Then what do they want? Don't mess with me, Anthony. I'll tear you apart. We ask people why they use Colace capsules. My doctor recommends. Grandma, look at those apples. You get the best looking apples on the street. So, we agree. Hey, Johnny, how's it going? Uncle Louie, how are you? Good. Come on, we finished the window already. I'm sorry, man, I couldn't get out of bed. Oh, yeah? Hey, Johnny. 40 cents for the apple. Mama Cortino, come on, a little present. 40 cents for him, big shot with a gold watch. No, no, go inside. Just remember, this is my stand. I let you use it for nothing because of Mike. That's Mike's son. Mike was blind, too. All right. Let's finish the streamers, and I'll... I'll do the banister. Hey, I'm sorry about flaking out last night, okay? I just couldn't help it. Oh. I thought you went to the movies. Oh, no, I bumped into some old friends, Ma. So, you didn't go together? Well, I ran into some friends, too. Pop really liked hanging decorations, didn't he? Remember Christmases? I would hang branches of trees down the stairs and above the doors and stuff. Home was real important to your father. Holidays, presents. The Christmas after he got sick, you know? You practically bought your ever game in the store. Yeah, but the best, the insane best time of the year is when Pop would take us hunting. Remember that? That was something. Hey, man, we could do that one Sunday, couldn't we? I got rid of the rifles. Yeah, I bet you still got Pop's revolvers, though, don't Johnny, you? You're not going to go hunting with revolvers. Is that right, Ma? I'm just going to take a look at the one that you keep right here. That's all, Ma. What do you say, Anthony, huh? Come on, me and you, we'll go hunting. We can rent rifles. The old family hunt, what do you say? That time was real special to your dad, too. Maybe I can have Uncle Louie take you, huh? Hey, mister! Johnny! Put that down. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he didn't mean it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so what are we gonna get Mom for her birthday, huh? A robe? A velvet robe? I got money now. I got a savings account. Yeah, we'll keep you two cents, Anthony. I said I got it. There's a great lady store on the second floor. Listen, uh, Johnny, I saw you talking to those guys yesterday. No. Uh, what guys? Outside. 
You were on the phone, and then you went outside to meet some guys in the car, same one as the other night. What? Are you, are you spying on me, Anthony? Don't! I mean, did you come back to get back into drugs? You know, guys hanging around the house, what are they doing? I'm trying to get free, Anthony, you understand? I don't want to answer anybody! Look, just don't hurt Mom. No, don't you hurt Mom. I'm paying for half the robe, whatever it costs. This make me look too fat. I can let it out here a little. Oh, and hide these? <laughs> oh, my mother was ashamed of my breasts from the time I was 11. I remember the fights. <laughs> yeah. You know, she could yell louder than me. Then. Do you have any soda or something? Oh, my stomach is flipping. Milk and beer, that's it. Johnny likes beer. Is that mm. cigarette helping him? Yeah. I always said I'll give it up when I get pregnant. <laughs> Which means I could be an addict for life. Why are you, my friend? You are such a jerk. Oh, thank you. Stand up straight. Oh, sorry. Listen, uh, at the restaurant, you know, there's this new guy. Um, I think he's kind of special. Maybe your type, you know, who knows? Don't. Let's not start, okay? Well, oh, Tony, isn't it time? I mean, they say that if Don't certain... tell me when it's time. When they say it's time. It's not like a storm, you know. It clears up and you go out. Three years, Mary, and it's been you three years. You want to know something? I still dream about Mike. We're dancing someplace. And he's singing in my ear. Do they say to just cut out the dreams? All right, so you're not ready. But you better tell me when you are. I'm not talking a husband, right? Just somebody. You know, things will work out. Johnny's shaping up. I may want to come home for good. And Anthony wants to go to college, the first one in our family. And they're getting along wonderfully. Five bucks a piece, okay, Uncle Louie? For the one who pops the most rap. I'll spot you, Anthony. No, you don't have to. Well, let's meet back here. Good hunting, huh? Hey, unbelievable. Great shot. <laughs> Anthony. 
Anthony, please. Suddenly you're talking crazy. I am not. In the woods, he was aiming them at me. He could have killed me. Where was your uncle? Oh, I don't know. He didn't see you. Johnny shot there. rabbits. Seven rabbits. Why would he shoot arrows at you? Why? Because that's Johnny. Don't be so upset, okay? You could get scared and, and you know, exaggerate about Johnny. You're just like... That's just what Pop used to say when I was little and I'd tell him what happened like I'm telling you. I put the lock back on my door. Anthony, listen. Listen. Your father used to tell me a long time ago, listen to me. See, there's... There's an Italian word. Chapelion, that's it. It means boys roughhousing. Brothers fighting. And there's a word for it because it happens. Like in the blood. That's the way. Your father would say you have to learn to handle it yourself. Fight back. And then you grow up strong. Not afraid. So you can defend yourself and your brother against anybody. Strong. Help me with these, huh? I need somebody strong. Mama's boy, right there, isn't it? That's a cute little mama's boy, isn't it? Cute little mama's boy. Don't you take your friends and leave? Oh, yeah? I live here, don't I? You don't give a damn about mom, do you? Yeah, like you're the only one who cares about mom, huh? Nobody else but you, huh? Pop, uh, too, huh? You told him lies about me, kid. Yeah, I'm. While he was sick, you were robbing from him. Do you believe him, man? Do you believe this little buttercup? Stop! Let him go. Come on, man. Who wants to punch him out? I'll hold the little bastard. Leave him alone, man. Come on, man. Get I think we got us a new target now. Man. Come on, whoever gets closest to the angel, right? Whoever gets closest to the angel. Hey, come on, Johnny. Stop! Stop! Stop it! Please! Anthony! Anthony! You hear me, Anthony? Damn it, Anthony, I'll kill you. I'll kill you, Anthony! He was going. I don't know. I, mean, I heard him leave. It's not like he said goodbye.
Nothing. No drugs. No guts. Believe me? I'm exaggerating, is that it? This 450 for fold out bed. You know, that is nice. Hey, Mom, what's going on, huh? Yeah. Come here, please. Mm -hmm. I think it pulls out. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Surely. That's right. You were out all night. I want to know where and what to do. Hey, Mom, I just got home. I see your note urgent hanging on my door, and so I'm here. What? To answer questions? I dropped out of school when I was 15 because I don't like questions. Are you doing drugs again? Hell no, I'm not doing drugs. That's a lie. Hey, you shut up, Anthony. I'm talking to Mom. Talk, then. About yesterday. You're home two weeks already. Guys are at the house the way they used to. You're meeting guys in cars on the street. I'm telling you, it's And you're hitting Anthony. Time. I'm telling you, you're not going to do that in my house. We were roughhousing, Mama. He fell. It was friendly. Don't lie to me, Dad. <laughs> You tell me what's going on, or you move out of my house today. This little punk doesn't know nothing from nothing, and you're going to believe him? You tell me something so I can believe you. Okay, listen. I'm not supposed to tell. Mom, they're going to be so ticked off. The hell with them. Who? I'm telling you. I was in L.A. having a bomb. I go into the beach, white pants, a convertible. I get this phone call from this guy. He wants to meet me, right? So I do. He's from Baltimore. He offers me a job, see? Terrific pay. Just to come back here and tell him what's going on. What do you mean, what's going on? The guy was the FBI. The FBI? And what's going on is drugs? The FBI just called you on the phone? Out of left field. Oh, God, I want to believe you. What's next? Johnny Cortino for president. Johnny Cortino on the moon. Mom, the limo from the airport, my credit cards. The FBI, they treat their boys good, you know. That's who I was meeting on the street. Mom, they watch over my little butt day and night. I'm letting the customer in. You been out. Mama, I swear it's the truth. I swear on Papa's grave. Don't you ever use your father's name like that. Ever. I can, if it's the truth, can I? I swear. On Papa's grave. I love Papa, Mom. Louie better get here soon or it won't be my birthday anymore. Mm, tell me about it. He visits his mother Sunday. She's got to nab him to fix the toilet or something. It's her big moment. Where's Anthony? He's... Anthony! Anthony! Did you hear? Nick Keelan's body was found in the park, man. He was strangled and shot in the head. What? Yeah. Is, uh, is Johnny around, man? Anyway, uh, get Johnny to call, uh, my brother, all right? He knows some more about this. Anthony, it was an execution, man. Johnny! Nick Chillins. Nick Chillins' body was found in the park. Shot in the head. 
What's that got to do with you, Johnny? Oh, my God. Are you next? The same thing all over again, only this time with a couple of bullets thrown in. Mama, the FBI is still looking after me. I'll be okay. Come here. I should have listened to you, Anthony. God. <sighs> And get out! Right this minute! Oh, come on, Ma. I can't do that. I'll help you, damn it. No, Ma. Listen, all right? You don't get it. Please, Mom. Let me tell you what's happening, huh? Come on, Mom. The truth, all right? Sit down. Sit down, Mama. Come on, relax. Sit down. Relax. Does he have to hear this? Why not? He's family. Mama, I gotta stay here, see? That's part of the deal. When I was in L.A., I got involved in this little drug thing. And before I knew it, not very long, Mom, but my luck, I got busted. And they were going to put me in jail, Mom, and, but then the FBI came. I can't stomach the lies anymore. Mama, please. They made a deal with me, Mama. I get to stay out of jail if I come back home and live with you and act like nothing happened. You see, Mama, that's my cover. You came home for a cover in this house. And now someone's murdered. I'm putting the finger on Frankie Hines for... Shut up. Shut up. You listen now. When your father was sick the last years, he put a lock on our bedroom door so we could feel safe from you. Stealing. Lying. Lock you out. It's the only way to feel safe. Mama, they need me to stay here, Mama. I don't believe this is they crap. I'm not crazy. Mama, you see this? Mom, look, this is a bug, Ma. They can hear everything I say to anybody all the time, Mom. And this is how I call them. I press that, you see? Come on, I'll show you. Come on. Hey, show my mother your ID. What's the problem? Just go on and show her. FBI, and show my brother. You can go now. Don't ever signal like that unless it's a real emergency. You better get with the rules. See, Mom, no sweat. Next week, after they kneel Frankie Hines, they're moving me to a place that no one can ever find me. Just let me stay here till then, You Mom. promised me that you'd make him go if he caused us any trouble. He put our lives in danger. Hey, they give you protection, you wimp. He lied to us. They can blow up the house. Mom could be hurt because of you. I said I'm going, didn't Just I? Just make him go now, please, Mom. Mama, your house will be safe, I swear. Just a week. Please, Mama. Then you go. So you'll be safe. But no. One week. Marianne, maybe you should... Till they move him. No. Mom, you promised me that you would make him go. It's my house! No. I'm your mother. Rhoda's dress. I'll see you tomorrow. I, uh, talked to my friend. There is a hit out on Johnny. Well, the FBI's on our side, I guess. You know, I wake up at 3 o'clock every morning and lay there, waiting for the phone or the doorbell. Some voice, someone in a uniform, telling me something's happened to him. When's Johnny going away? A few days, he says. The way things go, huh? Mike was some trouble, too, you know. I remember Papa crying one night because the cops came and took him away. He robbed a gas station or something. Papa always thought that he'd be in jail. I never heard that. Oh, yeah. God's truth. Mike really straightened up when he married you. Had Johnny. Everything changed. 
He was always spinning around, jabbing out at something, you know? Just like Johnny. Once he told me after we got married, he could, like, take a deep breath. Funny. Yeah, see? Boy, he was some scrapper, though, Mike. Was I afraid of him? But you fought him back. He told me. Papa didn't like us to take crap. But nobody was like your Johnny. He takes the prize. Hang on. We'll go to my house, make some rigatoni. Mama's special sauce. Huh? Hey, buddy, what are you laughing at? This is my girl. Well, who's laughing? I said you were, you son of a bitch. Apologize. What did you say? Apologize. Sorry. Not like me. <laughs> hey, come on, we're gonna go now. Put the music back on. You hear me? Hey, come on, what's wrong with you kids? Come on, let's have some fun. Come on, what were you doing before, huh? What were you doing? Come on! Let's go, Rockets! Let's go together! Johnny, where's my beer? We're gonna leave. I'm not going anywhere. How come? Because I want you to stay. So I can keep an eye on my house tonight. I'll walk you home. Come on. Make it by Styles. No good. A rebound by Tyler. It's swept away, but Tyler gets it back now. Yo-Yo on the ball up and down. Here's a 12-foot jumper. Score it. Nine straight. 52-46 now, North Carolina. Yeah, how you doing? Good. Hi. Hi. They ran out of anchovies. Damn it. You see my kid brother out there? Huh. Yeah, I taught him with the lesson before. He leads my mom around by the nose. Damn liar. I beat up on my brother, too. That little bastard came after me with a bat once. Huh? 
You can only smack him around so much, man. Advice. He knows what's good for him. This is my house. I live here. Here's the rocket. You got on pink underwear, rocket? Johnny, come on. Johnny. Come on. Let's see that underwear. I bet you it's pink, isn't it? Wait, you think you can come here and just walk all over everybody? What you did tonight in front of my girl? I'm not gonna let you. Come on, dance for us with your pants down, huh? Come on, pull them down. You get the hell out of here, okay? Because the nut's got a gun and you're gonna get hurt. Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Anthony, I'm so sorry. I just don't want you to hurt mom. Like me. You know, huh? You ruined everything. an uptight little buttercup. You're so full of it, Anthony. You hurt me in my heart. You can't. You, Mrs. Cortino? Yeah, Mrs. Cortino, I'm Detective Morgan, Homicide Division. Um, let me prepare you, ma'am. You don't have to. Don't you 
you can't touch the body. Look, it's evidence. Come on, try to understand. No, I won't touch. Okay. I won't touch him. Where's the FBI? No FBI. This is under police jurisdiction. They were supposed to protect him from a hit. It was under their protection. Your other son did this. Who are you talking about? Your younger son, Anthony. No. There were witnesses. No. Anthony. There was a hit out on Johnny. The FBI was... Three people saw... There's this wire thing and a beeper. But we got everything in his pockets. There was no beeper. I saw a beeper. No. They were supposed to protect him. Not from his brother. Send out for some coffee, Mrs. Cortino. Would you like some? Everyone keeps saying Anthony did it. Here's the problem. Now, nobody touch him. Let him go to his mother. Where's Johnny? Johnny's dead, Anthony. Take Anthony down to the station. Why now? He's... Can't they do it tomorrow? Oh, they're arresting him. That's what their papers oh, say. What? God. Why? Anthony? You gotta go with the, with the police now, okay? I don't even answer their questions about what happened. I was on the porch. That's all I remember. You don't remember what you did? I don't remember anything. Anthony, the gun you had, what'd you do with it? I never had any gun. Well, we gotta take it downtown now. Mama. It'll be okay. Anthony Cortino, 
your bail is fixed at $150,000, payment of which will release you from police custody until you are tried in a court of law for murder in the first degree. What I suggest, plead not guilty. Let's try to keep this boy from going to prison. Well, the other lawyer said if we plead guilty, the prison sentence might not be as long, maybe eight years. Ms. Cortino, let me give you a broad, clear picture. If you plead guilty, your boy can go to jail at least eight years, possibly life. With pleading not guilty, there's a chance Anthony could win? Yes. I've been over these police reports. We may have grounds for a self-defense plea. Of course, I've got to go into it in depth. See how Johnny might have provoked Anthony. Maybe all his life. Is that a possibility? What do you mean? Was there a history of beatings between your sons? They fought sometimes, you know. Brothers. Mary Ann, what? Anthony, do you remember anything at all about this incident? What you were thinking? Anything? No. Well, I have to find a psychiatrist to coax back his memory, if that's possible. It's important. What are our chances? Realistic picture. 19 million kids every year commit acts of violence against their brothers or their sisters. And that's more than between husbands and wives. And every kid that's killed his brother or his sister has been found guilty and gone to prison. We're going for something that hasn't been done before. Then Johnny started choking me and hitting me. And then one of his friends pulled me away. After that, you left and you came back with a gun. Do you remember that? No. The gun was never found. Maybe it would have been better if Johnny had killed me. But he didn't. You're the one who's still living. I don't have to be. I could do something. I can't stand this anymore. I'm not going to let you kill yourself, you hear me? I'll stop you. How are you going to stop me, Mom? Why do you let him talk like this? He's talking about how he feels, Mrs. Cortino. How he feels? How does he feel about what he did to his brother? No, he doesn't remember that. Perhaps at the time he couldn't help what he did. Please. He could help it. How many times you heard your father? In this life, you have to learn to take things. I took things from Johnny for Dad. Because that was the way with brothers. Let it beat me up all the time. I just wanted Dad to like me. He loved you. We both loved you. Don't you say he didn't love you. He cared what kind of man you'd be. Johnny wasn't the only one he worried about. Worried about what? That I wasn't going to turn out like him or Johnny? Don't you talk about Johnny. What about you? You're the one who let him come back and get away with everything. Maybe you're the reason why it turned out the way I did. You listen to me. What you're coming up for trial for in a couple of days is not my fault, you understand? Mrs. Cortino, can you understand the wish of your son? He wants to know that you really do care about him. I care. I care that he killed Johnny. You understand that? He killed my son.
I'll go get it. Mama? I remember. I went up the side stairs, got Papa's gun, pointed the gun at him. To build the self-defense case I've been talking about, every one of our witnesses will have to paint a picture of Johnny that's raw, dark, there's no other way, unsympathetic. The bigger a monster we actually paint, the more chances we have to keep Anthony out of prison. I'm not going. We all wish that. What are you talking about? A monster. You're not, you're not going to say Johnny was a monster. The defense witnesses are going to tell the truth. The things Johnny did. The wild things. No. They have to. No. What's the point? It'll be in the paper so everybody reads about the family. Strangers read about Johnny. No. I want that jury to know what Anthony had to face all his life from his brother. The horror. Johnny's dead. Don't you dig him deeper in the ground. He was no monster. Mrs. Cortino, this is my case. I don't want you to talk to any of the defense witnesses about their testimony. Don't screw it up for this boy because there's things you can't face. If you don't like that, you can get another attorney. My husband would never let them. Used to make him crazy when neighbors would say things about Johnny. I understand that. Mrs. Cortino, I'm thinking of keeping Anthony off the stand. I, I don't want that prosecutor to get after him. He's too vulnerable. But we definitely are going to need your testimony. You got other people to paint your picture. I need you to tell the truth about the deceased. You're the mother. The jury will buy it from you. I'm asking you. Don't call me to talk about Johnny. I'll do anything else. I can't do that. I may call you. And if I do, I expect you to say whatever you have to to keep this boy out of prison. It's an adult prison, Mrs. Cortino. I think you know what that means for a boy like this. Anthony Cortino. The charge against you is murder in the first degree. How do you wish to plead, sir? Not guilty. Murder in the first degree is when a person intentionally and with premeditation kills another human being. Anthony Cortino went and got a gun with the intention to kill his brother, and he shot two bullets into his body. For that, after you have heard all the testimony, I will be asking you to return a verdict of guilty. For that, Anthony Cortino should be sent to prison for the rest of his life. I'd say the family began to fall apart when Anthony's father was first diagnosed with a brain tumor. Anthony was six. Tell us, Dr. Fox, in your expert opinion, how the death of Anthony's father affected the household, and particularly Anthony. It was devastating. The mother was straining to control the older brother, but couldn't. So Anthony had to get used to the fact that there was no one to turn to for support or protection in his own home, and that he'd been beaten up severely by his older brother for a period of years, so that his family life would resemble, essentially, a war zone. <laughs> I should have choked him. Believe me, he was a bad boy, a devil. Please, just answer the questions. 
Your Honor, we're trying to establish the violent nature of Johnny as provoking what Anthony did. So, Mrs. Cortino, would you tell these good folks specifically any other violent incident you can recall? The day I buried my sister, Johnny was um, 14. We came back to my house. Please, I'm, I'm shaking. Johnny went upstairs and stole from me my sister's diamond ring that she had left me. Objection. Sustained. You may talk about acts of violence, not stealing. Well, I'm coming to that. How he kicked me in the shins and hit me when I went into his pockets and found the um, pawn ticket and uh, the pills. So you see, I knew it. All those years, I told them. I told you, Mariana, didn't I? I told Mike, do something about Johnny. Stop him. You okay? I don't understand anything anymore. How could you do that? For Anthony. Johnny was always hitting Anthony since he was four or five. He beat him. And did Anthony ever have to go to the hospital or to the doctor as a result of any of these beatings? He had marks on him, cuts, blood. But did he ever have to go to the hospital or to the doctor? Answer yes or no. No. No more questions, Your Honor. I'm saying we've heard enough about the victim's violent nature. Now we have to show what the defendant knew of that violent nature. I need to limit all testimony solely to acts of violence committed in the presence of the defendant. Sweet, I has to take the stand then to show what he knows. You're trying to railroad him, lady. Well, well, down, trying Wait. to force a 16-year-old to take a stand. We can't force him. But we're not here to try the victim as to whether he was a good guy or a bad guy. If he was the worst guy in the world, nobody is justified in killing him. I mean, I want to put the defendant on the stand. If he doesn't want to tell the jury what was in his mind, that's up to him. Hungry? Um, I got a pizza frozen. I could uh, heat it up. No. I don't want to do anything bad on the stand tomorrow. You'll be fine. Do what you have to. Anthony? How many times over the course of your young life, tell these good people, would you say that Johnny had beaten you? How many times? I, I can't count. Well, how many times in a week would you say you were beaten by your brother? Like a lot. Anthony, I want you to go back as far as you could remember in your childhood and tell the people here what is it you remember about your brother Johnny? I remember I had a cat and he used to pick on her all the time. But what is it he did? He'd smack Sheba, torture her. He told me he was going to kill her. Do you remember any particular incident about your cat and your brother Johnny? One day, um, 
he had some friends over and they were all getting high. So I took her and I hid under the back stairs. But he found me and they started throwing her around in a pillowcase. I just she yelling for him to stop. Yet you came back to the house where your brother had beaten you earlier and threatened to kill you? It was my house. You didn't want to let your brother stay in that house, did you, Mr. Cortino? No. Why should he? He lied. So you went away and you came back with a gun. And if he didn't get out of that house, you were going to use that gun. Isn't that correct? Objection! Damn it! Overruled. Watch the language. You never saw your brother Johnny in possession of a gun that night. Is that right? Not that night, but... So at the time you returned with the gun, Johnny had no weapon that you saw. He was just standing there. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. And you had come back into the house with the intention of getting him out of there, or you were going to use that gun because that's why you got it. Isn't that right? Objection, Your Honor! Overruled. No, I don't know why I got the gun. I don't remember that part. A selective memory. Objection, objection, objection. Disregard that last. May that be stricken? I said disregard. I have no further questions. Anything else? Nothing. No excuse. Anthony didn't help us. You be prepared to tell what you know, lady, because I sure as hell am going to call you as a witness. It's okay. You did fine. Know what's unfair when you realize all those little lines and So, uh, where, where's Anthony today? Don't know. We don't say much to each other. Oh, you're scared, you know? I mean, about what you're going to say Not tomorrow. Not again, okay? I don't want to go into this again. Well, all then right? when? It's tomorrow, Mary Ann. You're the last defense witness, right? You're the mother of the victim. Things are not going so good. But Mr. Sansbury says you could change everything. Look, I could change everything, sure. They've heard everything. What I say isn't going to help Anthony. Johnny was carved into tiny pieces. To everybody, he's a bum. That's what they see. To me, he's my son. You have another one, Marianne. I know that. What do you want? I still have an ache. Johnny died, and it's still there. I can't say what that man wants me to say. I can't just throw him away. I'm talking about Anthony. If you don't help him tomorrow, you're going to lose him. And you're going to lose me, too. What does that mean? It means that... It means that if you turn your back on him, your own son... Man, I respect you, Marianne. I do. But if you do that, I don't want to see you anymore. Rhoda, will you get off my back? Beat up on Louie. You are some heavyweight. Oh, oh, good. Well, if caring about you and your family makes me a heavyweight, that's some dirty word, I take it. That's fine. Then you don't know what the hell is going on, Marianne. Because you're blind. Rhoda, don't. You want me to choose between Johnny and you? Is that it? That's crazy. No, I want you to choose between Johnny and Anthony. Johnny's dead. You're a good boy, Anthony. God listens. My prayer isn't answered. I don't know what I'll do. Uncle Louie, will you come visit me? You know, in jail. Everything will be okay. I don't think my mom would. Anthony, what are you saying? Of course she would. No. 
She doesn't care. You know, it's funny. All this time I thought I hated Johnny. But I really loved him. Underneath. I hated what he did to the family. I'm sorry, Uncle Louis. Your Honor, the defense calls Marianne Cortino. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you, God? I do. What happened, Mrs. Cortino? The truth. When your husband was ill at home, did he tell you that there was trouble between Johnny and Anthony? That Johnny was beating Anthony severely? Yes. And did this trouble happen often? What do you want me to say every Thursday? You're under oath, Mrs. Cortino. Your husband told you about this trouble and you know it. Did it happen often? Yes. My husband used to say that's the way with brothers. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. And what does that mean, Mrs. Cortino? You're a parent. Are you trying to trip me up? Boys are boys. I don't know. I had two sisters. Does it mean that you let one boy beat the other one brutally without stepping in and stopping him, not protecting the younger one? Does it mean that you don't see that it's not just a little fist fight, a harmless shove, a playful slap, that it's full of hurt and rage and that it can explode into violence? Is that boys will be boys? You don't know. Johnny wasn't afraid of anything. That was important to my husband, that spirit. Their father hoped that Anthony would get that too. So he didn't want to break Johnny's spirit? Yes. So nobody did anything? I didn't say that. So you were protecting Johnny then like you're protecting him now by not remembering a thing? I object to counsel's harassment of his own witness, Your Honor. Mr. Stansbury, no speeches. Ask a question, please. <coughs> Mrs. Cortino, when your husband was alive, you kicked Johnny out of the house, didn't you? Would you tell this jury why you did that? Johnny sometimes didn't believe his father was sick. He, he'd say things, names, he'd call him names. So I told him he had to get out. But he wouldn't stay out. He kept coming back, breaking in the window. What happened when Johnny came back and broke in the window? There. They had a fight. What kind of fight? Did Johnny beat your husband then, Mrs. Cortino? Did he? Did he punch his invalid father and kick him and hurt him and leave him black and blue? Imagine a lifetime like that. A young lifetime like Anthony's. Irrelevant, Your Honor. Why is counsel going into this? Because Mrs. Cartino keeps denying that there was anything wrong in her family because she's still protecting her older son like she always did. Protecting the image of him as normal. The image of the family as normal. Because she doesn't want to see that that son was not normal. Because if she saw that, she would have to see that she and her husband never did anything to help Johnny control his bad behavior. And that she and her husband, with this boys will be boys mentality, are responsible for all this. We did everything we could. I object, Your Honor. Strike counsel's remarks from the record. Mr. Stansbury, I'm warning you. Mrs. Cortino, you said just now that you did everything you could. What do you mean exactly? Everything. I did everything in my power to help Johnny. I was running all over. From the second grade, he disrupted the class. So I took him to be tested over and over. They recommended a special class. He'd get into a fight and couldn't stay in the school. And that was 
From the beginning, I knew there was something wrong. I just didn't know what to do to fix him. We'd yell, we'd punish, he'd run away. And oh, there was child guidance, family sessions, and the drugs. It wound up he was arrested, and every time they just let him out. So what do you do for help? What? What do you do? They mean nothing. Nothing could have fixed him. Not even his mother, who did her best. <laughs> Mrs. Cortino, would you please look at your son, Anthony? He's here with you in this courtroom. Is that correct? Yes. Mrs. Cortino, will you please tell this court of an incident of violence in your home? The time when my husband had to go back into the hospital for some more tests. I got home. Anthony had locked himself in our room. We put locks on the door so Johnny wouldn't rob from us. Anyways, Anthony was crying. His saxophone was broken. Johnny had beaten him with the saxophone. There were black and blue marks and some cuts. And yet, when Johnny came back and broke into your house after he'd been gone, you always let him come back and stay, didn't you? Yes, he was my son. I always thought this is the time. Johnny's gonna change, be different. Even after the guns and the locks on the doors and the police raids, and even after you knew that he had beaten your other son for years. That's right. Right. That's right, Mrs. Cortino. You did everything in your power to help Johnny. What was left for Anthony? Maybe you should try me. Mrs. Cortino, did you love your son, Johnny? Of course I loved him. What do you mean? And what you told us here today, you didn't make any of that up, did you? Just to save your other son. No. It's the truth. I didn't see things about my sons. And I didn't hear Anthony. Really ever. I failed them both. been out five hours. Another 20 minutes, we'll come back tomorrow. Now, just before the jury comes in, they'll call your name. They'll ask you to stand up. Hello. Thank you. We'll be right there. I'd like to talk to Anthony for a minute, please. See you in there.
I said out there I didn't see things about Johnny and you. Maybe I did see them. I shouldn't have let those things happen, the beatings, and I should have stood up and stopped it early at the beginning. Why didn't you? Come on, Mom, we have to go now. I always thought that you and Pop were right. That there was something wrong with me. I love you too, Mama. Jurors, have you agreed upon a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. On the charge against Anthony Cortino of murder, what is your verdict, please? We, the jury, find the defendant, Anthony Cortino, not guilty. Every year in the United States, an estimated 19 million children engage in acts of abusive violence against their brothers and sisters. Can you describe Mrs. Cortino specifically any times involving your sons, Johnny and Anthony, when acts of violence actually took place in your home? I didn't. I was working, you know, every day. You mean you're telling us that you were not aware of any problems with your sons? What are you talking about? Problems. Every family has problems. With kids, you worry, right? How they turn out? That's normal. No. What happened in your family was not normal, Mrs. Cortino. That kind of terrible violence is not normal, believe me. Johnny and Anthony were like the other kids in the neighborhood. Did your husband feel that there were no problems with Johnny and Anthony? We thought they'd outgrow it. We've loved them more than you think is possible. And everything backfired. Hey, Johnny, here they come. Better beat to the penny this time. It always is, Johnny. <laughs> Pretty boy thinks he's Al Capone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You got a problem? No problem, man. Oh, what's with the smile? Hey, wipe it off your face, man. Smart ass, wipe it. I'll give you three, man. One. Look, Johnny, nobody's laughing. Let's go. Two. Come on, he's not smiling anymore, man, okay? Okay? I don't know why not. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Put your hands up! 
You know, you'd love it there, Ma. You'd never be cold. You know, I was gonna buy you an airline ticket for your birthday to come out and see me if I didn't come home now. When you are home. Think about what I'm saying. Okay? Okay? Look your crap. Johnny, hey, how you doing? I heard you were back, man. Yeah, uh, listen, Nick, I'm out to dinner with my mom tonight, okay? I'm sorry, I can't just talk to you, all right? Okay, hey, you look good, man. Thanks. Hey, you give me a call later, all right? And catch up on some old news, okay? Where do you know him from? Uh, the neighborhood. You have to check it out with Anthony before you ask me about the storm, Ma. No, I want it. He'd want it like I say. He's a good boy. A goody goody boy. Johnny. This could work out. Let's get a cab. We're gonna miss the movie. Cool. Cab. <laughs> wait here. I, I gotta go talk to those guys from here. Who are they? Just wait here. These guys, they're from California, and they didn't have my phone number, just my address. So I gotta go with them now. Where to? Ah, they're starting a business here. It's a job. Why didn't they just come to the house, ring the bell? If it's such good business. Because they didn't feel like it. Knock it off! Look, Anthony, everything's okay. I mean, it's clean. Then what do they want? Don't mess with me, Anthony. I'll tear you apart. We ask people why they use Colace capsules. My doctor recommends. Those apples, you get the best looking apples on the street. So, we agree. Hey, Johnny, how's it going? Uncle Louie, how are you? Good. Come on, we finished the window already. I'm sorry, man, I couldn't get out of bed. Oh, yeah? Hey, Johnny, 40 cents for the apple. Mama Cortino, come on, a little present. 40 cents for him, big shot with a gold. I'm sorry about everything, Mom. I'm straight now. It'll be different. Well, that would make me very happy. Call in a few days. Collect. I love you, Mama. He wants to come home. You kicked him out already, Mom. Twice. Once even before Papa died. You promised me that you wouldn't let him come back. You said things were good. He sounds... Are you going to let him come back? Look, just simmer down, okay? I didn't say yes. If you let I... him come back, then I'm leaving. I swear. Johnny. 
Ja. Yeah, for Miss America. What's that? It's a little old bikini, Ma. Oh, don't <laughs> put that away. Oh, come on. <laughs> Pop always said you were knocking on the bed and Stop. Right, Anthony? Great part, huh? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, huh? Okay. Good. Hey, we were, we were worried. We expected you an hour ago. Oh, well, I ordered that limo on my credit card, right? Yeah. And the creep had a flat. He was late picking me up. Come on inside. And throw that thing away. Nah, not before you model it for me, Mama. That is not funny. That's the brother. Hey, Anthony. Hi. Just getting home from school? I was playing with my band. Well, tremendous. I forgot the crap they have on TV here. In L.A., we got wrestling on in the afternoons. Well, usually I'm the only one here in the afternoons. You know, I'm practicing. Well, listen, if you want to practice, by all means, blast away, kid. I can take it. No, I'm sorry, I'll keep it down. No, it gets you and it's loud. It's okay. No, I'll keep it down. <sighs> yeah, I think it's great you got abandoned all. You're really shaping up, Anthony. You used to be such an uptight little buttercup. My band's pretty hot. Yeah, I believe it. What's its name? Well... We don't know which one to use out of two. It's either going to be electric shoes or blue shoes. Anthony, how you doing? Hey, Anthony. Working on it, working on it. Hey, can you lend me some quarters? I'll pay you back. Uh, yeah, I think I got some. Thanks, man. So, uh, how's your brother Johnny doing, man? Oh, he's still in Los Angeles. You know, we were here from him. Hey, I'm taking off. I'll call you later. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Smells great, just like Pop used to make it. Hey, my grandma's sauce, like we grew up on it. Nobody makes it like this. We don't do this enough anymore. You know, you coming over here for dinner, family dinner. Nice, hi, huh, Anthony. Hey, Anthony, you want to go to the fights a week from Friday night? I got an extra ticket. Oh, I don't know, Uncle Louie. I got an audition for the Mardi Gras show at school that afternoon. Oh, so how is the band? Great, except we don't have a name yet for it. I mean, at least one that everybody likes. But we were thinking of electric shoes. What's that? Electric shoes. Who's got electric shoes? What the hell's that mean? Well, it's catchy. I mean, it sort of grabs you. Yeah, it does. So what does the Rolling Stones mean, really? The Grateful Dead. Will you be grateful to be dead, Louie? <laughs> yeah, I probably will. <laughs> oh. Make it fast. It's probably about rehearsal. Hello? Yeah? Um, okay. Yeah, my voice is getting a little deeper. I'll get Mom. Mom, it's Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Fine, how are you doing? Oh, tremendous. The used car business is really booming out here. I'm selling like crazy. Yeah, got me a Rolex watch now and everything. It's got diamond numbers, too. Anyway, um, 
I was just thinking about home and you. I, I just thought I'd say hello. Well, good to hear your voice. Oh, yeah? How'd you like to see me? I'd like to see you, Ma. For a while. It's been a year. I miss you. Mom? Yeah. That's great, then. I get a plane tomorrow. No, wait. Wait, Johnny, uh... Let me, you know, let me, um... Think about it. Talk to Anthony. We kind of play like blues rock. Mm, blue shoes, all right. I like that. And you all wear little blue shoes together, huh? Maybe nothing else but little old blue shoes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can paint some other things blue, too. <laughs> yeah, if you could find them. Well, I gotta go get ready. I'm going to the fights tonight with Uncle Louie. Like the old days, we pop, you know? Johnny, um, some guys were asking me, and, well, I was... Just wondering if, you know, you had any of your guns with you. What guys? Just, like, guys, you know, from the neighborhood, neighborhood guys. Hey, I don't got no guns. And you don't got to go to Mom. I won't go to Mom, I promise. I didn't mean to get you mad. They're not, amigo. Blue shoes, that's the one. Hi, you ready? Uncle Louie's in the car. He drove me. I just got to get my jacket, Ma. Things are okay with Johnny, huh? Better than you expected. Yeah. Oh, Mom, my band passed the audition today for the Mardi Gras show. Two songs. Terrific. Johnny, hurry up. Your uncle wants to make the first fight. Hey, Anthony. Maybe you and me can hang out one night, huh? Go to a movie, huh? Club. Great. Sunday, I'm going to take the three of us out for dinner. A new place in the mall. Johnny, supposed to have the best crab ever. No, oh, tremendous, Mom. You know, I may never leave home. Okay, you better go. Hey, 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 I don't let anybody push me. Hurry up. I'm gonna make dinner. This place, it's perfect, you know? I mean, it's like a glass roof over the sky. Mm. I could live in one of these places and never go out. And there's no snow, there's no rain, there's no cold, there's no bugs. Mm -hmm. And that'd be something, huh, Mom? Never seen another bug for the rest of your life. Oh, I don't know. Let's not look for bugs. This is my treat. Stupid Anthony. He's missing out. I have to rehearse. Johnny, what do you think about coming home? Working in the store. Settle down. Come on, don't go push No, no, me. let me finish. Remember when your father changed the store from groceries to furniture? His papa had a fit. But he proved he could do it. You could, too. Sell anything you want to. With your personality. You smile. People feel it, you know? Forget it, Ma. I'm into other stuff now. So what's so great about California, huh? You got a sunburn all year. 